Can we talk about what what is called his tennis cabinet? Sort of the people who are influencing him throughout his presidency. I'm interested in. Yeah. So how a this little worked. just just a quick aside. When you first told me that we might be talking about the tennis cabinet, Lynn, when you said, "Oh, we're going to be doing a podcast on Roosevelt," I for some reason because we <laughs> have done a TR one in season one, I thought it was for FDR, and I was like, "He played <laughs> tennis." <laughs> I was like, what? In a cabinet. Like, How? <laughs> <laughs> cabinet <tennis. laughs> it, it wasn't until you sent me the notes for the episode. I was like, oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> that makes much more sense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, was he, he was really so trying to hide to, that polio, man. Does this have anything to do with tennis? <laughs> Well, FDR, I don't think so. I but um, well, TR, but TR, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. I mean, it was his favorite sport. I mean, so going back, Lynn, to your point about mm-hmm. like this persona that we think of, um, we probably would think that Theodore Roosevelt played football, right? Oh, that's yeah, like macho, right? Yeah, no, no, he does. He doesn't play football. Football's a college game, and then maybe we might think, oh, well, baseball was a really big sport. Yep, back American, in that time. And, yeah, yeah. Um, he hates baseball, so. <laughs> <laughs> he plays tennis. He loves tennis. He loves uh, martial sports too, like uh, uh, judo and boxing and those sort of things. But tennis is his real passion and he doesn't play it well. He's terrible. Um, he <laughs> charges Man, from my own heart. The net. He's, I mean, he's not a great, he's not a great sportsman. Anyone, <laughs> anyone at the time would have told you that playing with him was more like you know, watching out that he's not going to run you over on the tennis court because he was, it was like exercise for <laughs> Just him. get he out of the way. Out there. Yeah, he wanted <laughs> to, get his to run around. That was it. <laughs> but he makes a lot of friends on the tennis court. And um, at, on his, one of his last days in office, he has lunch with about 30 guys that he played tennis with. And this was his so called tennis cabinet. Mm-hmm. And um, these guys are complete unknowns in some cases. Some of them we do know. You might be surprised at some of the people that are there. So, for example, Henry Stimson, who is one of the most important diplomatic figures of the 20th century. I mean, Henry Stimson is responsible for dropping the bomb on Hiroshima. Um, he gets his start as an attorney general in TR's administration. Oh, wow. Um, and others as well, like the conservationist Gifford Pinchot is in there. Um, and many others, but there are just as many that are complete unknowns. Uh, and so I think it'd be really interesting to see if we can pick out some of these figures and understand how they really drove the political story in America, the political history of the country as well. So right. he was genuinely taking advice from these folks. Like they, they were informal advisors to him on. Yeah. So let me set the scene. So they play tennis like maniacs, right? (laughs) Three hours at a go, six sets. I mean, the men play five sets nowadays. So (laughs) this is an extra set. For what reason? I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens if you tie, but um, you probably play longer, but uh, they play this three hour massive set. Then they sit down often to a mint julep. So a lot of people say that TR didn't drink. Him and his buddies had a drink after a tennis match. (laughs) And then they would talk shop or they would go, walking through Rock Creek Park. They would go hiking up, you know, cracks in the mountains in Rock Creek Park, mountains, hills, I guess. But, um, (laughs) and then on those walks, they would talk shop. So, you know, the ambassador, the French ambassador would say, uh, Monsieur Roosevelt, we got to talk about Germany. And they would talk about Germany. Or uh, James Garfield, uh, who was the commissioner of the Bureau of Corporations would say, I think we should sue Standard Oil. And TR would say, lay out the case. So these guys were incredibly important. Hmm. Wow. That's, I mean, you know, that's pretty – presidents have had informal advisors before. I mean, Washington had a ton of, you know, people that mm-hmm. were outside of the government, um, you know, advising him. That's, that, that's pretty common. Um, but it does seem that they were pretty influential. <laughs> yeah, and some presidents take on, like, one key advisor. We can right. think about Nixon and Kissinger. Right. We can think about Wilson and Colonel House. Um, and then Washington's a really good example because he kind of needs to seek out informal advisors because there is no cabinet until he creates it. So you're right. Everyone has these informal advisors. I don't think they have as many. I don't think they're entirely expert. And I think Mm -hmm. a lot of these people were, Mm -hmm. and I also don't think that the only reason that they got picked was because of their athleticism. So, you know, 
Lyndon Johnson famously had the Tuesday lunch group that would talk about foreign policy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And these guys were all the best and the brightest, but they weren't going out, you know, and roughing up LBJ on the tennis court. <laughs> right. And, and there's something about that. There's something about sport that kind of equalizes people. You know, on the playing field, you know, you can be a genius. You could be the president of the United States, but suddenly this guy is kicking your butt all over the place. <laughs> I mean, that's humbling. And you might yeah. listen to somebody. Yeah. 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 I don't think I've seen a lot of video of like Obama playing basketball and stuff like that. But I don't think they were any of those folks were, were then stepping into the Oval to, like, <laughs> you know, discuss some stuff afterwards. It didn't see, it doesn't seem like that. That was the case. <laughs> the question uh, is, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I wondered, but you're <laughs> right. And, and uh, wasn't it George W. Bush used to go like extreme mountain biking? Yes. And, you know, <laughs> You can't talk yeah. to anyone when you're doing no. mountain bikes. That was out of the question. Right. It's very yeah. solitary. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. always wondered if anyone ever won, like beat Obama. Like if you're going to go play basketball, you're invited to play basketball with the president. Do you actually like do you feel try comfortable to win? winning? Right. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Never, will really will Obama that. respect you if you dunk on him? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it does seem like, you know, TR would have been upset if people were letting him win because he won't really you know seem to want to oh, i think he would have been outraged I, I think he wouldn't have invited you back to play actually right um the, and then, and there's there's a lot of people that don't get a second invite so hmm. if you show up and you're <laughs> terrible and you don't perform you don't get invited back and there's one guy uh lawrence murray completely obscure uh person in in american politics but he shows up to the tennis court and it's pouring and the president says well even though it's raining we'll we'll get we'll get you know, exercise playing water tennis, you know, or whatever he calls it. <laughs> and he thrashes this guy, Murray and Murray goes off and hires a personal trainer. Cause he knew he wouldn't get back into the white house if he wasn't fit. And it kind of transforms his life. He becomes oh, wow. a healthier version of himself. But he was just a guy. Like he wasn't like involved in like the, the political scene at all. He was just a, like a friend of a friend. No, he was, he was the assistant, um, assistant secretary of the department of commerce oh, okay. and labor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he when when you up, said he was just so you gotta some, be healthy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. When you said he was a nobody, I was just like, oh, he's just like a, just a dude. He's like, oh, he's a substitute teacher at the school down the street. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. He's really, he's really important. But I'm guessing, I'm guessing, Isaac, you've never heard his name, right? Oh, no, no. I've, I'm 100%. No idea who that is. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's obscure, is what I mean. He's not a nobody. Gotcha. He is a somebody, but he's pretty obscure. Yeah. Hope you liked the video you just saw. If you do, please like it and subscribe to the channel. It helps something called an algorithm. If you want to check out more content, check out our podcast highlights playlist for some goodies. And if you really want to help us out, check out our Patreon. Uh, the link's in the description. Thanks so much.